Hello, hello everybody. It is mid-April 2019. And yes, we are finally in spring. Well, I decided to do this early in the morning because it's so beautiful. All you can hear is the birds singing right now and the jets going over occasionally. Still working on the front garden, as you can see, and it is a work in progress. And I've got all my buckets and different things there, but it's coming along really, really good. A lot of the greens that are in there, like the kale and even some sprouting broccoli, those are cuttings from the plants in my garden. That tomato coming up long, that is just from last year. It hung in there and it's just starting to take off. So little by little, and that's a fig branch that I stuck in there. You saw it, it was with my mint. And I moved it and look at this. It is now turning into a beautiful tree. And I know that's a good fig tree because it's literally a cutting off a tree we have on the property that grows beautiful, big, green figs, really juicy pink inside. Let's see what's going on here. And I'm gonna to try to keep this short since it's in the middle of April and I have so many other things going on and I wanna show and share with you. So here is Let's see, I've got my tool going on. Oh, one of the kids pulled this down for the party. I can see that, no biggie. I'll just put this on, oh. Yeah, they pulled it down, they were running. We had a party here, uh, my grandson turned 13, and they were running through the garden. And I saw them kind of knocking into a few things, but like I said, no big deal. The rabbits didn't bother it, because the rabbits, the rats, the mice, they won't go through this. They don't want to go uh, near it. To them, this is some sort of trap. You've seen all my videos on this, and I've got a new video coming up on this where I'll explain more about this, but this has been a lifesaver to me. This is a game changer in my garden. So now I can plant up all the bricks. This has been here for weeks, and, okay, I don't wanna get into details on this because this is a video on itself on what I'm doing, but I've got all kinds of things going on. So we're gonna pass this and keep going. And I promise I'll get that video up real soon. Same thing here, just setting this up and I've got different plants and seedlings starting in here. This is my mint, this is peppermint. So I've got three stacks of peppermint. This, this, and then the one in the center and let's swing around. Not set up yet, but this is my ginger and turmeric table. So I am going to get that set up this week. That is my stevia coming up from the roots and most of it's from the roots. Occasionally, some of it was seed that fell, but look how beautiful. All winter, there was nothing there, and it is coming back. That's a tea plant somebody gave me. They bought it, they, have, they had bought three of them, and they died. Well, he thought they all died. Well, this one survived. He gave it to me because he saw a couple little tiny buds, and he said, I think you can do something with it. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna leave it in the pot he had it in, made sure the holes were big on the bottom, and sat it in here, and we'll see how it does. So, so far, so good. It's alive. Okay, let's go in the other yard. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful in the morning? Just gorgeous. All right. Walking onions. They're walking. Look at that, they're gonna be popping soon, full of babies. I'll be spreading them all over the yard. This I'm still working on, and I did a video on this. That was the day the bees came in. Another story. And that is volunteers coming in of tomatoes from my compost in place, the way I compost. And I've got a squash growing under there, and that's in the cup, the way I do my cups. And that's covered, so I don't want any bird to come around until that thing starts to take off. I've got a lot of setting up to do. A lot of setting up. See all the walking onions walking? You'll see as we walk through. Anywhere there's walking onions, they are walking. This is, these are like, isn't that wonderful? Just cuttings off the dinosaur kale, which is all back there. My old dinosaur kale, and you can make all the dinosaur kale you want. Let's keep going through here. Oh, let me turn around. Hold on. Still working on all this. Again, I haven't done anything. Last year's celery is trying to make a comeback. And I'm going to keep a lot of it. I don't care if it's last year's. I make potato salad and I use the celery and you don't need a lot because the flavor on it is so good. And then those are the cuttings I did. I've got the green sorrel, spinach, strawberry, and then I've got some cuttings from the mushroom plant and more things I have to move. 
I'm not planning on leaving this here, but boy, is this taken off. This is going to be full of strawberries. This, oh no, don't do what I did. This is a cutting off of a tree collard, and this is not the place you want a tree collard. So I've got to get that moved. It was a little piece, and it just took off. And like I said, I've got to redo everything. I have lots of work to do. Past couple of weeks, I've been just thinking about the party because I do cooking. Uh, I had some gluten-free kids that were coming to the, my grandson's party. So I needed to make sure that they had a cake. Oh, the cake was so good. A chocolate cake, white frosting. It was so good, decorated in a chocolate frosting, gluten-free. So we had that, I made fried chicken, potato salad, and cookies. Okay, so what is here? Let's see, okay, the tomatoes are still growing good. These are last year's tomatoes, but they are going good. And then again, oh, I have to show you something. Look, oh my gosh, this was not here yesterday. Hold on, I gotta get you up here. Look at this. Look at this here. Let me show you better on the other side. I was doing some gardening the other day and Gary was out here and I started screaming. Look at that. Do you all know what that is? Yes! I gotta keep it covered because I don't want the birds to eat it. That is my purple sprouting broccoli. After a year, I had given up and thought it was a hybrid. I got purple broccoli growing on it. I couldn't believe it the other day when I walked through here and Gary was videotaping something and I started yelling and he came running with the camera and it was amazing. I'm, I'm so ecstatic over a purple, bro purple broccoli. I just couldn't believe it because I can't believe it took a year, but it took a year. Three, the thing is over six feet tall. Look at that, taller than me, much taller than me. And it is leaned on top of that. It grew, well, there might be two plants in there because I had a total, I think five or six plants. But it took off in all different directions and now like I said, the second, the first one you just saw on the other side, that wasn't there yesterday. So I guess now I'm going to be getting purple sprouting broccoli. I am excited about that. And then, of course, this is my regular sprouting broccoli that I have all year round going. And guess what? The birds ate everything off. They ate the flowers. I could have easily thrown some tulle over it, but I didn't bother. Oh, well, look at the mint. The orange mint, the chocolate mint, it's all taking off. This is the right season now. And it loves it. See all the walking onions? They're walking everywhere. So let's see. Again, we're feeding the birds. And we've got collard growing in all different directions. This is my bonsai collard. Look at that. Plain old collard. Look how it grew. Like a snake. And let's see. And then, of course, there is the dazzling blue kale. That's the one I did a video on where I compost it in place around where the stepping stone is and it last year and now it is over six feet tall oh my goodness i just did this video and i said it was six feet tall and then i measured it and it wasn't quite six feet well now it's over look at that over six feet tall wow i do have some aphids on a lot of plants so what i've been doing and this is my fault when you cover with tool you're not allowing the birds to get in there and do their job so what I do is I just come through and I hose them down really, really good. And that pretty much takes care of it. you got to keep up with it. So you've got to do that basically in the morning so it sun dries good. Otherwise, you'll get powdery mildew on it. It's been working. Look how beautiful. I hose this one off. It's beautiful. And everything's flowering. It is spring. Look at this. These are just plain collard. It is flowering. I mean, that's my dazzling blue kale. It is flowering. As far as collecting these seeds, that could be a problem. It is. It will be a fine edible plant when it grows, but I don't know what it will grow into because I'm gonna have collard flowering at the same time. My dazzling blue kale is flowering. I've got this flowering, which is sprouting broccoli flowering. Now I've got purple sprouting broccoli flowering. It could be a whole mixed hybrid plant. So I don't know, I probably will end up with seeds because they'll fall and they'll end up growing anyway. So I'm gonna end up growing something out of there. And then of course the mint, the spearmint is all over the ground and that is taking off everywhere. The pepinos, they're doing good. I haven't even eaten, really done anything with them yet. They grow and then Gary takes them and he eats them. 
So I'll have to get more pepinos going up here. And Gary's got them growing really, really good in his garden. See all the walking onions are starting to walk? This is an older plant. Look how big the leaves are. Young plants are really, really nice. The older ones get these big leaves, but they're so good for cooking. So they're very different, the older to the younger. See how beautiful this is? Yes, I cleaned up my yard for the party. It was really, really nice. And the kids had a blast. Let's go back to the garden. And um, this is all, again, this is colored. This is my field of colored. It is planted in the ground, but look at it. It's all going to seed which is fine somebody messaged me and said oh my gosh you know my my kale and my plants are going to seed this is not lettuce this has gone to seed this is no problem if you don't want the seed heads you could cut them off but it's probably going to still force its way through and try to grow seed sideways because of the time of the year but it's not going to hurt the plant the only thing is it's putting all its energy into trying to produce so the leaves will be smaller, but that doesn't mean the leaves aren't edible. They could be a little bitter, but they may not. So that, you know, you'd have to try, isn't that beautiful? So as far as the plant going to seed, it is not going to hurt the plant. The plant will throw smaller leaves during this time. They may not get as big as they normally get. And they may or may not be a little bitter, not to worry about it. See, I've got some aphids, aphids on there. Just take a hose, blast it off. They're not that smart, the bugs, they disappear. You could take soapy water, just a, a couple drops of dish soap and some water and put it on with your hand or a spray bottle. That will get rid of them too. I had some of this covered, and when you cover it, the birds can't get to it. Um, I also had a, a type of native bee come through here and laid its eggs on it. So you know that sometimes when you wash away the aphids, you could be washing away native eggs of good insects in your garden. So, you know, it's kind of a give and take. So you have to decide what you want to do. But, you know, that's interesting. So, but anyways, don't worry about if it's going to seed. Once it's done, it's going to be done probably in the next month. We'll probably walk through here and it will be open flowers or seed pods on there at that point. Um, it's fine. You can cut them off. If you're going to collect the seeds, just take the, you know, let it turn brown, cover it over because the birds will eat the seeds. And if you're not going to collect the seeds, you have no interest, chop it off. Just take it off and compost the seeds out then. Totally up to you. This is the parsley. This has gone to seed too, and I have yet to collect parsley seed. And this grows right near the water fountain here. Again, spearmint all over the ground. Let's sw swing around. Again, a sprouting broccoli. We have a sprouting broccoli here, and that's two going the flower and then I've got my lemon verbena back there and more walking onion and a big old radish that I, or turnip that I've got to get out because I'm not even really collecting the seeds the birds are eating it sweet potato I haven't done anything with that yet I've got so much to do in the garden it's not even funny just so much to do and I don't know it's like where do you start first what do you do it's not like I don't have food everything you see is food the only thing you don't eat in my garden truthfully is the geraniums those red flowers back there. But everything, and back here, everything in the garden is edible. Everything. There's nothing in this garden that I cannot eat. You've got the mint, you've got everything. Here's another dazzling blue kale. Oh, this thing is a monster. And this is just beautiful. Also going to seed. It's the time of the year. Everything's going to seed. Look how foggy it is. I got up this morning and went outside and you could see the fog just rolling through the canyon. It was so odd looking and beautiful. Just beautiful. So the fog is still here in the morning. That's why I thought this is good. I'm gonna do it really early in the morning. Look how big that sorrel is. It's in a pot in this big container here, but it is in a pot. And that's why I love leaving things in pots. So when I water down the middle, I know that this plant is getting, let me see if we can see the pot probably. Oh yeah, see? There's the pot. I left it in the pot. I leave a lot of things in the pots. Just make sure you got good holes on the bottom and if they're not good enough, bust them. Take a shovel, take something, bust the bottom, have a big hole and leave it in the pot. This way it really retains water better. Um, I find they're healthier that way. It works so much better for me. I mean look at the dazzling blue kale. That's in a pot. That's in a three-tier pot. Originally it was stacked straight 
and I had walking onions, which I still do have growing around there and different things growing because each pot was a little bit, you know, bigger on the bottom, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. But this thing has kind of taken over and of course its roots are going deep down inside of this container. So I can compost in place right next to it on the side and continue to feed this monster of a plant. It works out really good. I, I really enjoy doing it that way. Okay, and there's my tree collards. I've got one over there. I'm trying to rush through before the sun really gets up and then it's bright in my eyes and the camera and everything. There's my other tree collard. That one is in the ground. I just did a video on that. That one is between the two containers and that one just took off and got massive. That one over there is smaller in the back. It's all the way in the back there. And that one is growing next to one of my containers from last year. So it didn't get fed as much but it still got big and it never really got staked good. So I really need to do something with that. I need to do cuttings and place them exactly where I want them instead of just kind of sticking things around. Even though I did have an idea, I couldn't get back there last year. That's right, it became such a jungle that I couldn't stake it. I managed to get in there and stake that one to the fence, but I didn't get to stake that one and I should have or it would have been straight, which is fine. It's okay, it's growing in its natural state. I'll think of it that way. So let's see, let's keep going. This is all chocolate mint in here, except for that little dreaded strawberry mint. Should have given that to my sister yesterday. But anyways, that's there. And look, oh my, sage is starting to flower. That's gonna flower there. I don't really use it, so I only have the one plant. I bought it and it grows and that's fine. I just never really use sage. And this is parsley. Look at that, parsley, everything's going to seed this time of the year the birds are breeding they're having babies all over the plants are breeding <laughs> you know they're having seeds all over there is that sun gold tomato oh my goodness that went all winter didn't even mind how cold it got and it did so well now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna stake this monster up or trim it back I should pull some tomatoes off get some seeds going since let me look around there are no tomato plants over here, so I could be in luck. So the seeds might grow 100% true. It's a give and take, but you know, I think I'll do that anyways. And the other thing I could do is do cuttings. This one's a little difficult to do cuttings. Actually, see this here? You got the leaf growing here. See this shoot here? That's your perfect cutting. You would cut it right down here where my thumb is, and then you would plant it and take off a couple more leaves. And that is the perfect specimen to reroot and make a new plant out of. Not the leaf, the leaf is not a plant, but this thing coming out here, that's a plant. And I probably will do that. Now it's got a couple flowers, not that. It's got some flowers trying to come up inside and that you wanna take off. Cause it's gonna to try to put its energy in the growing, of course, fruit. But that is a plant right there. And that's how you would do your cuttings. Let's see if there's another one. See, here's another example. You go up the stem and you see a leaf is here. But this thing coming up right above the leaf, again, that's a little small to work with, but that's what you would watch. And it would be this whole thing you would take off. And then you could plant it in some damp soil. You can use the paper cup method I ha you know, have showed you. You could put it in there, keep the paper cups damp, and then just put the whole cup and all once you see it, it's set root, just put the whole cup and all in the ground. I'll do another one on that. I've got another way of doing paper cups. Here is my other tree collard. Look at this one. I would say a good eight, nine feet tall. This thing is growing faster and faster. This one, let's see if I can get back here, is catching from this bin. So this bin I compost in place, which has got my purple dazzling, no, I don't know what that is, purple, curly purple kale. And so it's in the pot, but of course it's long left the pot and it's feeding off this white container here. So I don't have to compost anything here. It's feeding off the white container. So this one is just a monster. And again, I've got to get all these side shoots off because these are going to all make beautiful, beautiful plants. I mean, I've got a ton of them. I wouldn't take them off this tiny. This is just too small, but this is like the perfect one to take off and here is a perfect plant and it's all through here and some of them of course like this it's a little too big they do root but I do struggle because they're just too big I could cut it and do it in segments and do it that way I wouldn't get that straight tree but it doesn't matter let's see another purple 
dazzling blue, blue kale back there. Um, yeah. And see, that was a different tub, and there was all kinds of plants in there, and there was little tiny plants last year. Now it's a monster growing seeds. And there's the moringa back there, and it's starting to show leaves. It's, it did make it through the winter. I was worried. There's branches that will be trimmed off once it really takes off, Gary said. But see the leaves? So it made it. I was a little worried. I thought it had died, but it did not. It made it perfect. And then, of course, I've got more. Oh, there's kale everywhere. And we've, we've talked about this so many times. Let me keep going. This is another field of collard growing down there. I've got kale there and collard here. Look at this. This one plant has turned into a snake. It just lays in the... This is one plant. It snakes around everywhere. It all started in that pot and it left the pot. But you know what? It doesn't matter if I use it all or not. See those brown leaves? This is what's feeding my garden. Collard is like the best compost leaves. There's just something in collard. And I grab those leaves and those leaves go everywhere when they're yellow. I just push them under some soil and they just feed everything. And the worms must just love those leaves. So I'll be getting the uh, yellow leaves off and doing something with them. And we do eat from here. So we eat and compost with those leaves. And it's just wonderful. I've got to get, like I said, I've got so much to do. Still a little tired from the party because I was up till them all night almost trying to get my stuff done. So I'd be ready for it. And it was so fun. I I'll show you when we get out in the yard what was going on. I'll bring that up so maybe you guys knew about it, but I didn't know about it. Look at the papaya. Isn't that amazing? We're going to have papaya soon. Gary said these will not get big because he believes these are strawberry papayas. And so they'll be getting ripe soon. So he'll be able to see if, you know, what they taste like, but this is the one that, of course, you've seen came up in my compost bin. And I've got all those little ones I haven't popped out yet. I keep saying I'm going to. It's just I don't want a lot of papaya trees. I've got some growing down there. And look how massive it is. And I really don't want papayas growing all through my garden because they're so big. They do too much shading. And I don't need them through here. So I'm trying to figure out where I can just make a field of papayas. So I... I mean, I'll see. There's so much. It's not like we don't have food. I don't buy that much produce for us anymore. Everything seems to be, you know, from the garden. And then, of course, look at me, fashion design. Ah! <laughs> um, it's cold. It's still so early. Then, uh, this in, oh, let's see. In here, this is, I've got parsley. I've got celery. I've got, I'm going to do this all different. There'll be places I'll be using baskets and places I'll be using other things this year since I found other things that work much better than trying to fight with little tiny baskets on big plants. My strawberry tower. This has been amazing. I just, this is all the old strawberries from last year and they're making a comeback. And I have ant issues with this periodically and I think I brought that up that I didn't do a video on it because I didn't know if it would work because you're supposed to take your pot and soak it in water. I have gotten rid of the ants without soaking, without doing anything. So to be real quick, maybe I'll do a quick video on it sometime, but what I did was analyze the ants and take some sticks, poke sticks in there, and the ants were gone. So I'll see if I can get some. I want to make sure it works before I tell anybody what to do, or at least it works a few times for me so I can state, hey, this may work for you. Let's see, rosemary. I actually put that in my green drink the other day. There's so many vitamins and nutrients and everything good for it probably kept me going for the party. I threw that in my green drink. So now I will be using the rosemary. It's just amazing. And the papayas, of course. Gary forgot to pick papaya yesterday. He was going to pick a papaya for the party. You know what happened was he cleared, look at that, no more man cave. He cleared everything. So my grandson wanted the arcade. They bring this huge semi truck. And the kids were gone. We didn't see them for hours. They're inside this truck with TV set up and one side's got these cushioned couch stuff they sit on, comfortable couches, and they play their games and they sit. I, I've got some footage. I'll drop it in while I'm talking. And from what I understand, the party's in the truck. So you've got the, my parents and some friends and people eating. And this is the trucks they bring now. Isn't that something? Oh, the things they come up with. Look at that. I can't believe this. 
What happened to the bouncers that they kids used to get? I guess the bouncers? No more bouncers. We upgraded. This is your thing now. <laughs> Tell me what the obviously 13 year olds don't want bouncers anymore so what do these 13 years olds want now uh gaming trucks pretty much so they can start their game on their friends online stuff um gymnastic inside there as well so this this is amazing now this is pretty much this is what happened to the bouncers? <laughs> this is a new generation. The new of generation of bouncers. Is this amazing? And you know what? This is amazing. That they don't even need your electricity. They come with their own electricity. I, I had no idea. All I know is my daughter said, "Oh, we're bringing a truck." <laughs> is it a truck? I, we're gonna peek inside. Okay, we're gonna take a look inside. What happened to the bouncers the kids used to get? Oh, I know. <laughs> well, they kind of bounce in there. Look at this. This is something I have never seen. There's the birthday boy. There is a smile. Now, come on, wouldn't you rather have a bouncer? Not really. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna step out and let them do their thing. But this is amazing. I, I am amazed. Here, here Gary thought he's, oh, we're going to have to get the extension cords out because when the bouncer comes, the extension cord has to be put out there. And then when they order the water slides, he needs the hoses going. Gary's in. He's eating. He's not even out here. <laughs> that is really cool. Very cool. Great idea. Okay, I'm going back inside to eat. Well, thanks so much. But they... They sit inside, all the kids. It's a good way to get rid of kids if you don't want them in the house. And we almost got to keep it because they couldn't get the, the thing, the truck out of here. And I thought, ooh, this is ours now. But anyways, no, they couldn't get it out. It took them 30 minutes to get it out. No problem getting in here, but they couldn't make the hill up. But anyways, the kids sit in there and they play with their games and their video games. And it was really nice. All the adults got to sit in the house and talk. Something that you usually can't hear with the kids running around screaming. And for about two and a half hours, they sat out here and it was all set up here and it was beautiful. And the kids had a blast. No more bouncers. Oh, so funny. Anyways, I'm going to compost all through here along the papayas. That one's going to need help because it struggled through the winter, but it's making a comeback really, really nice. And I'm going to compost some place there, not just the leaves, kitchen scraps and collard leaves and different things. This is even trying to come back really good. It was really cold, this one. I've talked about this in all my other garden tours, so you all know about that. And those are two orange trees, and I think i got to get them in a separate pot. Okay, let's go walk over to the wall. That is the bathtub. Haven't done anything with it yet, but I will. And of course, that was my other compost container. I compost in place and it's tiered. Going to get that set up. Swiss chard is going really good. The celery is still going from last year. The tomato needs help and I will decide if I'm going to keep that tomato. It really did make it through the winter. So nice. We had tomatoes all winter. Up against the warm wall, see? So I'll see. And of course, all the Swiss chard coming up in celery. The celery, too, was wonderful. Had that all winter. And of course, the walking onions are walking. Isn't that cool? I love, well, I think everybody should be growing walking onions. No seeds. They just keep throwing the baby onions. You'll see on the next garden tour, they'll all be popped probably. And my Moringa, look how beautiful. It's coming back quick. So we'll have Moringa growing here really good soon because the weather's warming up. And everything will be just flourishing, I'm hoping. But here's the eggplant. Got some yellow eggplant, didn't pick that one, missed it. And then Swiss, uh, yeah, more Swiss chard. This is the one that's kind of half red and half green. And then the sal thistle, which we use for ourselves. It's a weed, but we do use it. Let's go over to the truck bed. That is a radish, a radish seed that fell down there and grew. And look how massive it is. I'm going to leave it, but right, and I don't think I'll be collecting any seeds from it. I might, might not. But the birds, the bees, everything feeds off this. So I'm going to just let that thing do its own thing. And I've got a container in here where I'm composting in place in the back. And you could, oh my. I don't believe that. This is not a good thing. Did you see that? Because I did. You little 
bugger. You're getting into the truck bed? Are you serious? You know what? You don't want to leave. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to have to be careful because being that it's, a, it, it's either a young one or a female doesn't want to leave. She may have had her babies in there. I didn't even know they can get into the truck bed. That is a first. I have never seen... I thought this was the safest thing in the world. And now... The, oh my gosh. All right. I will water this lightly tonight. I will not flood it because she may or may not have babies in here. The idea that she stood right next to me... This is unreal. I'm in shock right now. So early in the morning, my throat is dry. I haven't had any coffee. Didn't get a lot of sleep. And I come out here and see this and that's just unreal. So she might be, I don't know how, she just leaped right out. So I'm not even sure. It's amazing how far these things can leap. I didn't even know they can jump that high. All right, I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna do this because I don't wanna overwater it if she has babies. What they do, and Gary never did the footage on it, but he watched them, it was very interesting. They have their babies in the middle of wherever they wanna have their babies, literally right on the ground. Then they have a hole that they have dug after they have their babies. Afterwards, when they clean them up, this is out in the open, they take their babies and they put them into a hole and they cover it and bury them. Then they leave. They go back all day to feed their babies. They undo the hole, go feed their babies, and then cover them. If they find a brushy area, they had babies in Gary's sweet potatoes, then they will just leave them in the open laying there. It's, they do it really oddly. But it's, she may have babies. She absolutely did not want to leave. And she might have found the place and thought, oh, wow, this is wonderful. Got underneath the avocado tree decided to have her babies in here and she may be tending to her babies. So I will water the pot since I've got pots in here and water lightly because she wanted to stay inside underneath all the Swiss chard because I don't want to disturb her babies if she's got babies and I'll keep an eye out and see what's going on. She wouldn't have them in, in, in the open. I'll just water it easily now. I, this is, oh my gosh. Anyways, this is the truck bed. Let's get back to this. Here's the avocado tree and it's, it really hasn't set fruit fruit, but we'll see if it does or it does not. And right now the flower buds are still there. So I'll, you know, we'll see next time we come back. They even have them down here too. Look at that. So it's all over and we'll just see if any of them set fruit. I cannot believe this with the rabbit. I really had never seen any rabbit droppings in here. I've never seen a rabbit come in here. I mean, it would be difficult unless they hopped on there, but she just hopped off the back. She might have been going up the wall. No, she can't really. I don't know how she got in there. She's got her way and she's determined to not be far. Oh boy. And then there it is down there. Look at that, no man cave. Isn't that amazing? See the sun is coming up. I wanna do this quick. And there is the beehive. Unbelievable. He's already talking about getting more bees. He is so excited with his beehive. So that's it. I uh, hope I kept this semi short and we'll do a longer one. I have so many videos I wanna do on how, what I'm doing with my tool and I've got more seeds to plant that are working fantastic. So I think with that, I'm gonna end this here, show no more man cave and back to the garden. And now the sun is coming up through the fog. What a beautiful, quiet morning. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <gasps> so she, either she's having babies or going to... Okay, that's a deep burrow. She's got her... So she's got babies in there, maybe? Maybe. Then I won't flood it right now because she didn't want to leave. And they're very shallow. Like this may only go three feet in or a couple of feet in. Because sometimes they'll just nest under Okay, because she did not want to leave. Then I won't flood it right now. And I'll just water that half. These roots from this big Swiss chard will go all across the truck bed. And they'll be fine. I want to get these cages down anyways, but I might leave everything right now. Okay, she's figured out she can walk up the wall here. 
She's got a safe place to have babies. And no coyotes probably go in here or anything. And it's not out, it's not in the open. She can sort of get out. Because that's, I'm sure place. that's new because the other day I literally flooded this place. Yeah. There's another spot in your garden under the tub where they've been digging. And I'll show you that if you wanted to see that. But it looks similar to that. So they're all having babies right now everywhere. Okay, it went, this only goes down half a hand until it hits the base of the tub. And the base of the tub is this deep. Okay, so, so that's another one where they're going to have babies. Yeah. I, I saw this this morning. It's going to have a lot. Yeah, this is all new. 